All right, so we're looking at 5.5, Compare and Order Rational Numbers, which starts on page 387. Compare decimals and fractions. Positive and negative rational numbers can be represented on a number line. You can use a number line to help you compare and order rational numbers. So we talked about that with our um, positive and negatives. Now we're just talking about it with decimals and fractions included. So fill in each blank with the less than, greater than, or equal to to make the statement true. We've got negative 1.2 and 0 0.8. Remember what we talked about with the um, positive and negatives. Basically, if it's negative and if there's a negative and a positive, then the negative is the smaller number. End of story. It doesn't matter what numbers those are. This could be 0 0.00000001. And if this is positive and this is negative, the negative is always going to be smaller. So that's pretty easy. Just pay attention to the sign. If the sign is a negative and positive, boom, the negative is smaller. Okay? The next one, though, shows us where we have two negatives. So you actually really do have to look at this closer. Um, remember that in negative world, it's opposite world. Okay? So negative is opposite world. Um, that the bigger the number, the smaller it is. Bigger it is. So when I've got one po negative 1.4, negative 1.25, they're both negatives. We're talking the same world, right? In negative world, the bigger is the smaller. So think money, a dollar forty or dollar twenty-five. A dollar forty is the smaller number. Does that make sense? Um, you can also fill in the number line. Um, Thinking of this, uh, the way that they did their number line here, if these were temperatures, right, we've got zero up here and then all our negatives down here, that the farther away from zero you go, the smaller your number is. So remember that as well. Number three now gives us fractions, and it gives us negative three-eighths and negative five-sixteenths. I can't compare these. Um, it's great if you can use mental math somehow to figure these out. It's great if you can figure out halves. And C, based on halves, we talked about um, estimating based on halves before. But both of these are less than one half. If one was bigger than one half and one was smaller than one half, maybe it would be a little bit easier, but it's not. So I need to find common denominators. And with 8 and 16, 16 is my common denominator. And remember, guys, that the only reason I'm even going this far is because they're both negatives. So I really have to look at the numbers for real this time. So I get common denominators. I end up with negative 6 sixteenths and negative 5 sixteenths. And remember, the bigger the number in opposite world, the smaller it really is. So that's why we give it a less than. All right. So you're going to do A, B, C, and D on your own. Um, and then we'll come back and we'll talk about it. So go ahead and get started. Pause your video now. All right, so I hope that A was a really fast and easy one for you because you should have noticed right away that there was a positive and a negative. So obviously the positive is a bigger number. Then B, unfortunately, we have to look a little deeper into it because they're both negatives. And remember, a negative world is opposite world, so the bigger the number, the smaller it is. When I make them both into the same amount of decimal places, $4.50 and $4.49, $4.50 is the bigger number, which in opposite world means it's smaller. So that's why it's less than. Uh, for C, they've given us common denominators, whoop, whoop, and they're both positives, whoop, whoop. So now we just need to figure out which one's bigger. So 9 sixteenths is smaller than 12 sixteenths. Number, or letter D, is both negatives. Okay, so we're going to have to figure this out. They give us um, tenths and fifths, so I knew I needed to find a common denominator. My common denominator is 10, and so I end up with negative 7 tenths and negative 8 tenths, which the bigger the number, the smaller it really is, so negative 8 is going to be the smaller number, so it's greater than. Negative 7 tenths is greater than negative. All right, so compare and order rational numbers. To compare and order rational numbers, first write them in the same form. So, okay, I've got a decimal and a fraction. They're both negatives, so unfortunately I can't just jump into it and say, oh, positives are always bigger, you know. That's not happening here. They're both negatives, so I actually have to figure out what do they both mean, which 
going back to when we did repeating decimals and um, terminating decimals with negative numbers, top dog in the dog house. I need to divide. I need to do 8 divided by 15 and um, let's do that over here. 8 divided by 15, add my decimal point and my 0, um, let's say 5 and that's going to be 75. Get a remainder of 5, so I need to add another 0, drop it down. Now that would be 3, that's going to be 45 with a remainder of 5 again. And now that I see that's going to happen, that's going to be a, re um, a repeating 3. So this I'm going to call negative 0 0.53 repeating. So if I'm comparing it, negatives, decimals, two decimal places, I've got 51 cents and 53 cents. 53 would be the bigger number, but in opposite world, it's smaller. And so the answer is greater than. Let's try another one. So this time we're going to put them in order. And they've given us um, a decimal and then two fractions, or two mixed numbers, I should say. Um, they're all negative. So already I know I don't have an easy answer here. I need to actually work for it. Um, I need to make them all into decimals or I need to make them all into fractions with common. I'm going to um, go ahead and make this all into decimals. So the nice thing is is that for the negative 2 and 1 tenth, that's easy to write as negative 2.1. Um, the negative 2 and 22 twenty fifths, 22 over 20 fifths can be made into a denominator of 100 by multiplying times 4, and so that's going to be 88 hundredths, so it's going to be negative 2.88. And then we've got our negative 4 point, or sorry, negative 2.46. Talking money, I'm going to think about this as $2.10. It's all in negative world, so the bigger it is, the smaller it really is. So going from least to greatest, let's make sure we always read our directions, we're going to start, least to greatest is actually the biggest number, so that's my $2.88. So my negative 2 and 22 twenty fifths. Notice I'm going back to the original form, not the one that I changed it to. Because I don't know what negative 2.88 is. I gave you negative 2 and 22 twenty fifths. All right, the next um, smallest number, again, thinking money in opposite world. The bigger the number, the smaller it really is. If I'm comparing between my negative um, 2 and 2.46 and my negative 2.10, negative 2.46 is next, and then my negative 2 and 1 tenth is the last one. And so that's going to be my order from least to greatest. All right, so how could you represent negative 8.3 feet is deeper than negative 5.7 7 feet? So how could you explain that, that it's deeper than negative... 5.7. Well, it's further away from zero. The further away from zero it is, is this is zero. This is our, um, this is ground level, right? This is zero. And I've dug down, oops, sorry about that. And I've dug down 5.7 feet, that's like negative 5.7, right? To go even deeper, to get to 8.3, that means it's even deeper. Because in negative world, um, the further away from zero we go, the smaller the number is. Well, in this case, when we're talking about digging a hole, it's the deeper it is. Just kind of all is relevant. So you're going to do E, F, and G on your own. So please pause the video now and try this on your own. I'm really excited to see if you guys get it. Unfortunately, there's no gimmies in this one. So you're going to really work for it. Pause the now. All right, for E, I had to do top dog in the dog house, and I found that it was going to be negative 3.625, which is equal to negative 3.625. So that was equal to. For F, I did the same thing, top dog in the dog house down here in green, and I divided, and I found that it was going to be 0 0.428, blah, blah. It was going to keep going. Honestly, as soon as I saw it was 4.2, and this is 4, 1. Let me change colors. As soon as I saw this was 4, 2, and this is 4, 1, I knew that I could stop. But I wanted to get one more just so I had the same amount of decimal places. 
and so I could compare my um, 0 0.428 and my 0 0.413 and I know that 428 is bigger than 413 and so that's the way I went with greater than um, then because those are both positives then for G I had negative uh, 7 and 13 twentieths which I changed to se negative 7 0.65 and then my negative 7.78 I left alone and my negative 7 and 17 hundredths I wrote as negative 7.17 it's going from greatest to least remember that negative world is opposite world and so the um, bigger the number the smaller it actually is so looking at my decimals seven dollars and seventy eight cents is the biggest number so it's the least and so I went in that kind of order where I went from smallest to biggest, but in the opposite world, negative world, it was actually greatest to least. So negative 7 and 17 hundredths, then negative 7 and 13 twentieths, and then negative 7.78. So number six, Mr. Plum's science class is growing plants under different conditions. The table shows the difference from the average for some students' plants. Order the differences from least to greatest. So we've got Ricky, who has a difference of 3 and 1 fourth. Debbie, who went negative 2.2. Uh, Suni, or Sunny, went 1.7 positive. And Lenora went negative 1.7 tenths. One, or sorry, 1 and 7 tenths. So um, we want to put it in order for the differences from least to greatest. Now obviously the biggest negative number is going to be the smallest. And so if I look at just my whole number, I've got negative 2 and negative 1. My negative 2 is going to be the smallest number. So negative 2.2 it is, Debbie. And then the next one is negative 1 because it's the only other negative number here. So negative 1 and 7 tenths. Then I've got my two positives, which if I'm looking at it, I've got a 3, a whole number 3, and a whole number 1. Obviously, the 3 is going to be the bigger number, so the next number in line is going to be 1.7, and 3 and 1 fourth will end it off. That one's kind of easy because we can just look at those whole numbers. Um, you know, in negatives, we put the negatives together, and then positives together, and put them in order um, from least to greatest, and we have a go at it. So that ends our 5.5 .5 lesson on comparing and ordering rational numbers. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you in school.